Hello and welcome back. The HP Reverb G2, just like my channel, is not dead. Can I just before we get into the video, can I take this opportunity to thank everyone who is still subscribed to my channel. It's something I wasn't expecting and I have been missing in action for a little while. But winter's coming and it's time to get back to the videos. So Windows Mixed Reality, the base operating system that the HP Reverb G2 sat on, has always been, in my opinion, a bit of a thorn in its side. I've never had anything against it, but it's always made the HP Reverb G2, in my opinion, clunky, and as a, content, a VR content creator, it makes it very difficult to record in VR but there has been a significant change and first of all big shout out to VR flight sim guy Steve because I saw on his channel that there is someone who has taken the time to reverse engineer the HP Reverb G2 and get it to run purely on Steam VR. Okay, first of all, I want to introduce you to Matthew Boucherini. Hopefully I've got that right. No disrespect if I've just butchered your name. This is the guy that has created a driver to work with Steam VR. We'll go on to the driver in a minute, but there are some things I'm gonna to have to change with my operating system so that this will work. But first of all, Mafru, never came. I've heard the name before. I have heard the name, but I didn't know who you were, so I've looked you up. This is definitely the guy. He's clearly worked at Microsoft. He's worked with SpaceX on the Crew Dragon, the Falcon 9. He's done the OpenXR for Windows Mixed Reality, the OpenXR Toolkit with PlayStation. 4 PlayStation VR vSphere and Windows 365 mixed reality so now it makes sense how this person Matthew has been able to reverse engineer the software for Steam VR and I must admit I didn't think this was going to be possible I didn't think anybody was going to be bothered so Honestly, from myself and imagine my subscribers, community, you've probably already heard this, but a massive thank you goes out to Matthew. Now, as I mentioned, at the moment, if I put a video out quite some while back now where I stayed on Windows 11 23 H2, because if you progress to 24 H2, Windows Mixed Reality was removed and your Reverb, Reverb G2 was dead. But what I've got to do, we've got to reverse the changes that we made before. We're going to go in and do this now, then upgrade to Windows 24 H2. Then I'm going to install the Oasis uh, driver for Windows Mixed Reality that's now available on Steam. And we're going to give this a test. This is what I've wanted since day one. To fully be able to use the Reverb G2 within Steam. So once again, Matthew, thank you. I tip the cap. Really, really do appreciate it. So what I'd done previously in the local group policy editor. And I'm just going to let people out there know. Because it was highlighted many times in the previous video I made. If you've got Windows 11 Home Edition, you're probably not going to have uh, access to Group Policy Editor. I believe there are ways you sort of back engineer it, but it's not native. Now, I've got to try and remember this. It's been a while, but we're going to be looking at the Computer Configuration Policy. We're going to be looking at Administrative Templates. Then we're going to be coming down to Windows Components. And I believe you scroll down to the very bottom down here, click on Windows Update. And if I bring the window up over a bit more, it's Manage Updates Offered from Windows Update. And in here, I configured two settings. The first was Select When Preview Builds and Feature Updates are Received. So if I double click on that, 
I should be able to revert back to the previous setting, which was not configured. So I'm going to click OK on that. Uh, <laughs> so weirdly, even doing previous setting, there you go, then it's let me apply it. So if I click OK to that, ah. Strange, to, as you've just seen there, to reset it, you're going to have to go in, double click on it and select not configured. And then basically this one here, so which was select the target feature update version. So I manually set Windows 11 23H2. Again, if you wanted to see what your previous setting was, it was blank, it was not configured. So if I cancel that, if we go into it, double click select not configured and apply click OK so you can see now that all of the settings in here are not configured so now what we're going to do I'm going to jump over to Windows updates so if you've run check for updates and it says there you're only getting a cumulative update preview come up you don't have to install the update previews unless you've got a specific issue with your machine but if it's for example Windows 11 24H2 is not coming up what we can do is push Windows and key and R then run command and then we'll do So this will force a uh, group policy update. So computer policy update is completed successfully. And user policy is now updated. And what we could do now, because uh, <laughs> you're recording your video, I won't execute this before stopping this element of the recording. So that's going to tell the computer to shut down, but we're going to force a full uh, reboot of the machine, like a cold boot, and I'm telling it to do it instantly. But I'm going to stop the recording before I execute this command, otherwise you won't get this part of the video. So I've jumped forward 24 hours. In the previous part of the video, I'd wanted to let Windows download or offer the 24H2 upgrade via Windows Update. For 99% of you out there, that's going to be the safest way you can install this. But I, even after 24 hours and the 24H2 update not presenting on my PC, I got fed up of waiting. I've went and downloaded the 24H2 Windows ISO, I've mounted it, I've run it and it's gone through updating itself, downloaded and it did present a window and I'm slightly annoyed, I've just recorded it but realised I hadn't linked my screen setting properly so I've recorded a blank screen but anyway just to bring you in up to speed before I install 24H2 because I want to keep all my files and apps it did warn me that when you move to 24H2 you're going to lose access to Windows Mixed Reality we know this that's the point of this video but just be a hundred percent sure that you do want to go through with a 24H2 upgrade because Obviously under 23H2, you've got Windows Mixed Reality as a fallback, you know it all works. Moving forward, there could still be compatibility issues, so just bear that in mind, although we are thankful for having this facility. Now, if you are going to go down the ISO route, uh, doing the update yourself, I recommend that you be very careful and check the settings that you're doing as is on screen at the moment when you come to the point that you're going to install make sure that you keep your personal files and apps if you select the wrong option you will wipe your PC you'll install Windows 11 24H2 but you will have a freshly installed copy and it will flatten wiped all your data files games etc depending on what drive they're on so do this method of install at your very own risk so welcome to the other side we've now got windows 24h2 installed and we're just going to do if you type in search winver 
That's right, my Reverb G2 is just falling over. And if I drag this into the screen there, you'll be able to see Microsoft Windows version 24H2. So now that we've done that, we need to head over to Steam and we need to install the Oasis uh, driver for Windows Mixed Reality on the wish list. And I'm just going to click on Add to Library. So this is now installed. If I come over to launch, and it's got two options, launch the Oasis driver for Windows Mixed Reality, or launch to unlock your headset and controllers for Oasis. Well, because we haven't unlocked the headset or anything before, we're going to need to do that, so I'm going to click play. And I'm pretty sure... Right, it did get an error up on screen. Expected error occurred during unlock. So I'm going to retry. So rather than... Ah, okay. Now, it says please restart Steam VR. But I'm just wondering, does it need the controllers... So as you can tell by the wardrobe change, we've jumped forward a bit. And I just want to mention the caveats about moving to Windows 24H2 and the Oasis driver. Something I didn't realise because natively the controllers pair to the Reverb G2 headset through its own Bluetooth and you pair it with it. If you move to 24H2 and the Oasis driver... The controllers no longer pair to the headset. The Bluetooth, he that doesn't work. And what you need is a Bluetooth device working with Windows. So you must have a Bluetooth, a Bluetooth controller uh, on your motherboard or you're going to need a Bluetooth dongle that you can plug in and then pair your controllers to the Windows Bluetooth and then unlock, and then unlock them. I didn't know this and I rushed ahead like anybody who doesn't read the instructions not realising that you would need an additional Windows Bluetooth controller to work with the controllers. So if you don't have Bluetooth on your machine and you've, if you use your controllers, don't upgrade until you've got the facility to use Windows Bluetooth to pair the controllers to. Something else I also want to talk about, initially when I put the driver on, I didn't realise that you have to have SteamVR open and ready to run anything in VR before you launch an application. Before Windows Mixed Reality uh, would just be running in the background and then whatever you launched whatever application whether it was through xbox or whether it was through steam vr it would launch in the headset what you have to do and what's great is now that i have microsoft flight simulator 2020 and 2024 on the xbox application as long as steam vr is running in the background you've got the really Oasis driver running there. When you switch to VR, it will switch in the headset. So that's brilliant in that I can now use Steam VR and the Xbox version of Microsoft Flight Simulator. I don't. Ha you don't have to buy that in Steam. So it is going to work. This video's already got long enough. I was going to show you some tests and things, but as time's gone on, I'm just going to get this video out. I'm going to put a link at the start about the caveats because some people might not realise about the controllers. I found this out after I tried to get them working and then realised you've got to pair them to Windows Bluetooth to unlock them. But anyway, uh. I'm glad to be back making a video. I've enjoyed this. I am going to get back into the videos. I'm pretty sure there's some good things coming. I've said this a long time ago, but sometimes things pan out and take longer than people expect. But good times are coming. Thank you for watching. Please comment down below if you've already swapped over. What's your impressions? And thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.